Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on our video today. My name is Josh here from Your Best Life Academy. And today we're going to be jumping into detail on something called basic insurance concepts and principles. Now, a lot of people have been requesting for us to go a little bit more into detail on some of the sections on your exam. So in a lot of states, this ends up being chapter one. OK, so if you're new to the industry, uh, as far as getting your insurance license, first off, congratulations. What an amazing decision to want to get involved in this line of work. I mean, there are so many people out there that unfortunately are misinformed. They don't have somebody to really to guide them and teach them. So by you taking that first step to get that license, congratulations. What a great job. And if you're about to take your exam, maybe maybe you're kind of just revisiting it. Congratulations on doing the right thing and making sure you get that last study session in before you take your exam. So as a lot of you may know, uh, we are based here in the state of California. The good news is most of what I'm going to be going over today is so it doesn't matter whether you're in California or not. A lot of these terms are really going to apply. So what we're going to be getting into today is more terminology, more words that are going to be important for you to know so that the questions that you see on your actual test make more sense. Now, one of the biggest questions I get is, do I have to memorize all these words? No, you don't. It's very rare in this exam that they ask you, what does a word mean? The only reason why it's important to try to understand as best you can the following words is because it makes the question easier. It makes you be able to understand what it's really asking you. For example, let's start off with the first one. The first one is producer or agent. Now, who is a producer or an agent? Are they different people? Do they have different roles? They actually do. But in this video, I'm not going to be getting so much into detail about it. We're going to save that for another video when we enter into a topic called the insurance marketplace. OK, so as as of right now, what you have to know is a agent, a producer is a legal representative of a company and they represent one company. That's it. They are representatives of one company. Then on the other hand, you have somebody called a broker who is a legal representative of multiple companies. So they can work with more than one company. Sometimes they can refer to brokers as independent agents. Like I said, are there differences with these words? Yes, they are. But again, we're not going to get so much into detail on this on this video because this is just more of an intro. OK. Another word that's going to be important to know is the word person. Now, <laughs> if you're like me, like, well, I already know what a person is. Well, obviously, we know that a person may, is a human being. But here are some other words or other things that are also considered to be persons. OK, any one of the following is allowed to enter into any type of contract or agreement. OK, for example, like corporations, organizations, associations, partnerships, all those things, as far as in a legal sense, they are also considered to be persons. OK, now these following ones that you're going to see in red, when you see a red one, you want to take extra note, extra attention to these, because these are the ones where either a lot of people tend to get confused or you may get it on the exam. For the following one, it's one of the ones that people tend to get very easily confused. And that's the word insured. OK insured why why is insured so important to remember because it's the person remember we just talked about what a person may be that's covered by an insurance policy here's the reason why a lot of people sometimes get this one confused because of the word insurer so if you notice both of these words are identical pretty much except for that last letter that d and that r okay so what is an insurer an insurer is that company, the company that's giving you that coverage, that protection, whatever you'd like to call it. So it's very important that you remember that a lot of people, especially people that English may not be their first language, tend to ask me about that. OK, so if it ends with the D, they're referring to the person, the client that has the coverage. If it ends with an R, now we are talking about the company or the insurance provider, the company that's covering that person. OK. Another name for insurer can also be principal. OK, so whether they say the word insurer or principal, they are talking about the company that is giving out some sort of coverage. All right. Applicant, sometimes known as the proposed insured. 
proposed insured has been being used more often now. So take note of that, okay? It's the person that's applying for the insurance. And then we have an insurance policy. Insurance policy it is a written instrument in which a contract of insurance is set forth. So basically that paperwork that you get when you sign up with the company. But it's important to note the reason why I'm writing it this way, because that's compared to the other ones, this is like, what the heck is that wording? The reason I'm putting written instrument, because that's a very common phrase that the test likes to use. Okay. And then we have policy owner. The policy owner is pretty much the one that has control of the policy. They have control of the plan. They can exercise all the different types of rights and all the privileges that a policy may offer. All right. Now, moving on, here are some other words that are going to be also important to remember. The word premium. So in this exam, the premium doesn't mean good. I remember I used to think that premium meant really good, like the premium gasoline you may put in your car. Well, in this exam, the word premium means payment. Now, I don't think I've ever seen the exam tell you or ask you what does premium mean. But it is important to know that anytime you see that word, they're referring to some sort of payment that's going on. Okay. Now, this next word. This is one of those words where they will ask you what it means. It's one of the more common ones. And the reason they ask about what does the insurance mean is because a lot of people sometimes tend to mix up the definition for insurance and the definition for insurance policy, like we talked about on the previous page. They are not the same thing, okay? Insurance is more of an idea. It's a concept. And an insurance policy is that written paperwork. It's that contract, that agreement that you have with that company to cover you for whatever may be, whether it's auto insurance, health insurance, or even life insurance, okay? So insurance, the definition, the easiest definition I can give you is that it is the transfer of risk. You're passing it on to somebody. So that's what insurance means, okay? Is the ability to transfer the risk to somebody else or something else, okay? Now, what does risk mean? What are what exactly are we transferring when it comes to insurance? We're going to be transferring risk. Risk is either going to be used as the uncertainty, the possibility, or even the chance of a loss. See, every day when we go out, there's a risk. We don't know what's going to happen out in the world. So the, these three words, I'm using them and I'm underlining them because they're the more popular ones. They're the more common ones that are going to come in your exam. And yes, risk is also one of those few words where they ask you what the definition is. What does it mean? So whether it's uncertainty, chance, possibility, all of them uh, are going to be the, the more popular choice to go for in this test. Uh, and it's of a loss. Now, when it comes to risk, there are actually two different types of risk. We have pure risk and we have something called speculative risk. So pure risk is commonly known as loss only. When something is pure, when something is 100%, it means you already know what's going to happen or what it's made of. So a pure risk is a guaranteed loss. Here's a little side note. Pure risk is the only type of risk that is insurable. Okay? So if pure risk exists, you can buy insurance. So let me give you a short example. Let's think about cars right now. If God forbid you were to get into some sort of car accident or an accident in your vehicle, is there some money that has to be paid out? Absolutely. If you hit another car, obviously you have to repair their car and your car. If you hit some sort of property, you're, there's going to be property damage that your company is going to have to pay for and fix. Or even if you don't hit any car and you mess up your own car, are is there going to be money that has to be put out? Yes. So in either one of those three scenarios, no matter what happened, whether it was another car property or your own car that got damaged, there's always money that's going to have to be put out to be repaired. So in that scenario, that's considered a pure risk because there's always going to be some sort of loss. So because of that, auto insurance can exist because there's the pure risk of that. Okay. So hopefully that example helps out a bit. The next one, speculative risk. Speculative risk is known as loss or gain. You can win or you can lose. The most popular example and the one that's commonly used throughout this exam is the option for gambling. There's no such thing as casino insurance. 
just in case if you go to Vegas or and you lose it all in Fortune, there's no way for you to cash in some sort of policy to be able to get your money back. Why? Because when you gamble, there's that possibility of loss and there's that possibility of gaining. Okay, so because of that, because we're not sure, we're speculating, no insurance can be purchased for those types of situations or scenarios. Okay, now whew, we're gonna, we're hopefully we buckle in for this one. This one's gonna be a little bit longer. Now we're not gonna talk about definitions as much. Now we're gonna get into a full concept. Okay, so here's the concept we have something called hazards, then it goes down to perils, and then it goes down to loss. So the reason that it looks this way is because I want you to kind of think of steps to a stair, a staircase, okay? So one after another after another. So usually when you look in the exam, when you're reading through your material, you're going to notice that if you look at the definition of hazard, what does hazard mean? It usually says something along the lines that hazard is the cause of a peril. And then you look at the word peril and you look it up in your, mater your study material and it says peril is the cause of a loss. So they all affect each other. It's kind of like, like I said, steps in a staircase. One make causes the other, then causes the other. So hopefully I'm able to kind of get into detail on these so it's a little bit more clear, okay? So let's start off with loss. We already all probably know what loss means. It's a reduction of quantity, quality, or value of something. If you lose something, if you have more than one and you lose something, now you have less. The quantity went down. The Let's say you have a car, it gets a scratch, it gets damaged, there's some sort of loss. Now the quality goes down or even the value may go down as well. So we're already familiar with what loss means. So now let's focus on the word peril. So we know that peril is the cause of a loss. So what causes losses to happen? And the answer is, an accident okay now they're not going to say that in your exam they're not going to say that apparel is an accident the only reason i'm using the word accident is to hopefully be able to make it a little bit more relatable hopefully so you can really understand what apparel is okay so in my words apparel is an accident okay it's a specific event it can be a tornado crash a flood a fire whatever may be as long as they title the event title the accident then it's going to be considered a peril okay so remember perils are the cause of a loss what is peril it's an accident if they, you have any type of accident is usually going to result in some form of loss right so now let's go up one more hazards so hazards are the cause of a peril but we know peril means accident. So what is a hazard? So basically, or speaking very simply, a hazard causes you to have an accident, okay? Now, there's four different hazards in this exam that you have to, you have to know. The first one is called a physical hazard. The next one is called a moral hazard. Then morale. And then we have, lastly, a legal hazard hazard. So any one of these four different hazards can cause you to have a number of different accidents. And as long as they're titled, because again, specific event, it will be considered to be a peril. Okay. So let's start off with the first one, physical, a physical hazard. What would a physical hazard be? Well, that's going to be a physical condition that you may have, such as being blind, being deaf, Having it, any type of physical condition can unfortunately lead you to have an accident, especially you're more, you're more prone to have an accident. In my case, I love eating. So because I love eating and you can see it on my body that I do, that is considered a physical condition. And unfortunately, it can lead to, have, to major accidents or health issues that I may have down the road. And if I have a specific accident, it would then be considered a peril. All right. So. The first type of hazard is a physical hazard, which is a physical condition you may have. The next type of hazard is we have moral hazard. So moral hazards, I remember growing up uh, in elementary, we used to have to read stories and they would ask us, what is the moral of the story? What did you learn? So your morals are more like your beliefs, more like your values. 
And I hope that one of the things you may have been taught growing up, one of the more common things that we're all taught is that you shouldn't lie, okay? So a moral hazard is when you lie. So how is lying going to affect you? Well, if you lie to a company and they find out, they may not have to cover it. They may not have to cover any type of coverage or benefit that they promise you because you lied to them. So it's very important that you don't lie to them. And they like to call that a moral hazard, okay? So a moral hazard is when you lie to them. The next one, morale. So if you notice, it has an E at the end. So a lot of people tend to get morale and moral confused, okay? So I hope with this example, we're able to clear that up and you won't have to worry about the differences, okay? So a morale hazard is something known as an indifference to loss, okay? An indifference to loss. Basically, it means you don't care. <laughs> you, you know it's bad, but you're going to do it anyway. That is a morale hazard. So the example that I love to use is the word speed. And the reason I like to use it, because if you notice, morale ends with an E, and the word speed has two letter E's. So I don't know about you guys, but I definitely um, have driven above the speed limit, <laughs> especially here in California. And, you know, you got places to be, you got kids in the backseat, whatever it may be. So obviously we all probably know that driving above the speed limit is illegal. It can cause you to get a ticket, but you do it anyway. Or I'm trying to bring you down with me. I do it anyway. You know, I know the law. I know it's bad, but I still do it anyway. And that's an example of morale hazard, an indifference to loss. You know it's bad, but you do it anyway. And as a side note, that's a lot of the time the correct answer if they ask you a question about it in your test. Driving recklessly is their favorite answer when it comes to describing a morale hazard. Driving recklessly. Hopefully you can remember that phrase. But yeah, morale hazard, you see that letter E, I want you to think of speed. Because if you've ever gone above the speed limit, obviously you know it's bad, but you do it anyway. And that's the best example for a morale hazard. Now the last type of hazard, a legal hazard. This has a bit more to do with you as an agent or a representative or a producer, whatever you want to call it. Okay. It has to do with the money not going to where it's supposed to be going. So let's say a client gives you some sort of money for the for a policy or for the initial premium or for a down payment, whatever it may be, and you use the money for something they didn't ask for. Use it for a different type of product or worse, you use it for personal use. Well, that's going to cause you to have a legal hazard because there's going to be legal repercussions, legal things that can happen to you. Now, this one is barely starting to come up on some exams, so it's not as popular just yet. But all you have to remember is when you see legal hazard, I want you to think of the word money, okay? Because it's always going to have to do with something, either the money not going where it's supposed to or the money is not going to be right. So that so here to, to wrap up, to close off, watch this wording, okay? So peril is the cause of a loss. We talked about that earlier. Now, hazards can sometimes be the cause of a loss as well. The only difference, watch that word. They're going to use the words event or condition. Remember how I, I, I talked about earlier that ha, the perils have to be a specific event. They have to have a name tied to it. So if they don't put a specific event, if they just said so-and-so had an accident, what was the cause of a loss? Now the answer becomes hazard, okay? So hopefully as you go going through this, it's going to make a bit more sense. I got a fancy little graph right here that gives you the breakdown. We have hazards that cause perils, perils that cause loss. And that's why you want to get some sort of insurance to protect yourself from that loss. Okay. So that's going to wrap it up for part one of the video. You want to make sure you locate and find part two, just in case if you're just getting started off, or like I said, if you're reviewing it, so you can get that full chapter in for this section. Thank you guys so much, and we hope that you continue to live your best life.